And may we bring that sense of kindness to ourselves as we sit and that sense of wishing of well-beings for others, happiness, giving our the foundation of our practice a sense of inclusion and a sense of kindness. The official morning greeting, letting the bell bring us to this place of stability in our seat. Getting comfortable wherever you need to sit, stand. Paying homage to the Buddha, to the Dhamma and the Sangha. To that understanding that awakening is possible, it's here, it's in this present moment. And homage and appreciation to the teachings of the truth of the way things are right here and right now, however that is. And appreciation to the Sangha, those of us here in our circle, as well as all of those who have gone before us and passed on the teachings of the Buddha in the various ways they have, generation after generation, as it moves from country to country, householders, nuns, and monks that have done their best to continue the purity of the teachings, that they make it to our ears and the blessing that we have to be born in this lifetime as human beings, to be able to hear the Dharma and to be able to have just enough pleasantness and just enough suffering to have the option to begin to see clearly what's really true, that we can see, even with something simple like paying attention to our breath, that life is impermanent and not satisfactory and also we can't really claim it as our own by discovering that one breath at a time we can find also the opportunity of freedom and so may we develop and cultivate our hearts may we let go of what doesn't seem skillful and not helpful for our awakening. And may we incline our mind toward wholesome states. May we envelop ourselves in kindness for ourselves. Non-ill will, non-harm. And as we settle, we can notice gravity, we can notice our bodies sitting where they are. There might be pressure at the buttocks on the cushion or the chair. We may feel coolness against our face or hands, places that are exposed to feeling the air, we can come into our senses. 
noticing, hearing what arrives to the ears without grasping or identifying or clinging to it or thinking that it's pleasant or unpleasant. It's just the purity of sound arriving at the ear door. may notice something arriving at the nose, the door of the sense of smell. We have taste. We have touch. Where our hands are touching each other or where our arms might be resting on the body. This brings us to the here and now. It brings us into this moment. There may be thoughts arriving, arising and passing. We can just make a soft, gentle note of thinking, arising to the thought door. So we settle into the body, into the touch point, and use whatever is your familiar initial connection with a single object. It might be at your nostrils or your belly. You may notice coolness or warmth, pressure, tingling. Or maybe it's one of the touch points so that we can always return to this primary anchor when we find ourselves roaming off lost in thought or spacing out as I was talking about this morning when I got up or spacing in, just bringing ourselves over and over again gently and easefully to the present and using this primary object as a place to really put our attention to meet with whatever's coming up in our awareness with mindfulness, connecting with that object and then seeing clearly those three characteristics of anicca, anatta, and dukkha that we see that we can't hang on to the breath. It rises and falls on its own accord. We can attend to it and be present with it. And notice when it falls away on its own. It becomes impermanent. We can't grasp it. And if we try to grasp it, we may notice that there is suffering that arises from that. And so it's a simple practice, but it's not easy to keep returning or even to wake up in the moment that we notice ourselves aware again. We can just wake up where we are when we find ourselves wandering. We can notice right there, oh, pleasant or unpleasant or neutral feeling and carry on from there, anything it comes into the mind stream can be our the object of our awareness and mindfulness
And so out of kindness for ourselves and out of compassion for this life and our world, we sit down every day and we train the mind to be present with the wild and often neurotic swirl of bodily and mental activities without judgment. We're not directly trying to get rid of this mess, but rather from a place of humility. We want to better understand the nature of these incessant loops of thought and the body tensions that thoughts can create. And we develop persistence no matter what comes and goes in this field of experience. Any experience is simply the next thing being known, being felt. It's like this now. We can ask ourselves what is happening right now. What is the mind state right now? Anything and everything can be an object for our clear comprehension. Whether it's familiar or unique, anything that comes into the view of our attention is fair game for our mindful awareness. And sometimes it can be helpful to name what the experience is. 
breathing in, breathing out, irritated, confused, interested, irate. Calm, happy, physical and mental experiences. Mindfully aware of them, not just glancing at them, but spending enough time to connect and sustain with what the experience is. And in this way, we can keep a continuity of practice to be aware of the continually changing objects that come into view. And we stay with this experience to see its impermanent nature arising and passing. If we've lost our place or get confused, we can just return again to that primary object and sometimes 
returning to that simple noting to just calmly name like a little whisper in the mind what we're experiencing. Sometimes it seems a little awkward doing noting, but it helps sort of direct thinking into a simple and kind of rudimentary form rather than letting it wander off into distraction. An idle mind can kind of get in trouble. It's sort of a saying that describes how an inefficiently attentive mind can easily drift off into thought. And mental noting gives the thinking mind something to do which supports meditation rather than distracting from it. And it can be a useful way to interrupt that incessant flow of discursive thoughts. We just give our current experience a one word label. So it's not discursive thinking, but it's really, uh, it doesn't involve analysis or judgment. So we just note hearing without thinking any more about the sound or seeing or touching or feeling or thinking. Or sensations might be noted as warmth or coolness or pressure, tightness. Emotions could be simply noted as happiness or sadness, excitement, fear. Mental activity could be recognized as wanting, planning, resisting, things like that. With mindfulness of breathing, a common note is rising at the belly or the chest as it lifts on the inhale and falling, rising and falling. It can help keep us present. It can help be an anchor.
rising, falling, pressure, warmth, coolness. Noting can be mostly a slight nudge to encourage mindfulness so that attentiveness to the felt experience increases. As circumstances change, we how we note may change. Sometimes just noting when we're easily distracted, but not once we're settled. Or we can use noting when we're being mindful of particular experiences like thinking or feeling emotions. Or sometimes people use noting to name only what's distracting. And others find that it's never helpful to use mental, mental noting if they prefer a more silent form of knowing. Sometimes we can make a vague note like here or this to help us stay present. It's just a tool to help us sharpen mindfulness and help with insight. And as we become quieter, the mental noting also becomes quieter. It can become as soft as a whisper. And many times the words aren't any longer needed. So we use it when it's helpful and let it go when it isn't. To wake up in this moment and see clearly what's happening.
rising and falling. Noticing what's happening in the present moment. That it has these characteristics of being impermanent, non-personal. And we can begin to see the truth of the Four Noble Truths living in our lives. That if we cling and crave something, it can be challenging. Cause dukkha. And as we practice letting go over and over again, we hold ourselves gently with kindness. And may we let this concentration that we've been developing, may we let this settle in our hearts. May we have this gentle smile on our faces to offer kindness to all living beings. May all beings be happy, peaceful, and at ease. This includes ourselves in this circle. It includes our teachers and benefactors. Close friends family, relatives, neighbors. May all beings know happiness, have happiness and the causes of happiness. As we expand our universe today, all those beings around us, those that we don't know, some of the animal beings that we may not see. May we hold all in kind regard. Developing this sense of ease that we do no harm to ourselves or others. And we cultivate this kindness of the heart. All living beings, known and unknown, seen and unseen, those in sorrow, those in joy, those enlightened and those unenlightened. May all beings everywhere be free from harm, safe and protected. Those above and below in all directions to the north and the east, the south and the west, above and below the earth's surface. May all beings be happy, free from harm, safe and protected. And may we develop this sense of kindness cooling the heart and mind. Anicca vata sankara uparavaya domino upakita vamiruchanti 
te sam vipassamo sukho. All conditioned things are subject to impermanence. They arise and pass away. And seeing this clearly with mindfulness brings the greatest happiness, which is peace. And may the merits, may the goodness from this practice, the joy that it can bring to our hearts, may it be of benefit to all beings. And as I ring the bell and we gently let light come in, I'm going to share my screen so that those of you who want to chant the sharing of the merit, you can feel free to. I'll, I'll be the unmuted one. And otherwise, just listen and let the sounds flow into your hearts and minds. Through the goodness that arises from my practice, may my spiritual teachers and guides of great virtue, my mother, my father, and my relatives, the sun and the moon, and all virtuous leaders of the world, may the highest gods and evil forces, celestial beings, guardian spirits of the earth, and the Lord of death. May those who are friendly, indifferent, or hostile, may all beings receive the blessings of my life. May they soon attain the threefold bliss and realize the deathless. Through the goodness that arises from my practice and through this act of sharing, may all desires and attachments quickly cease and all harmful states of mind, until I realize Nibbana in every kind of birth, may I have an upright mind with mindfulness and wisdom, austerity and vigor, may the forces of delusion not take hold, nor weaken my resolve. The Buddha is my excellent refuge, unsurpassed is the protection of the Dhamma. The solitary Buddha is my noble guide. The Sangha is my supreme support. Through the supreme power of all these, may darkness and delusion be dispelled. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. May we be reminded that unsurpassed is the protection of the Dhamma. And so as the light comes to your eyes and you look around, may you give some of that kindness to others in the circle. And we will have some time to say hello to each other. I'm going to take a moment here.